Mr. Attorney General, in the year 2010, the last year that was, we have uh, extensive records for, 76,000 denials under NICS, 76,000. And you know these figures. 34,000 were felons, 13,000 fugitives. There were 13 convictions. 62 were referred for charges by ATF. 62 out of 76,000 denials. Okay, and a denial means someone came in and claimed they could buy a firearm, but they really couldn't, and therefore committing a federal crime doing it. 62 charges referred, 13 convictions, 8 in Indiana. So you probably have some rogue prosecutors in Indiana who didn't get the the feeling from the department that you're not supposed to prosecute these cases. The, I, the IG from the department testified in front of the committee. His impression is that it's just low priority in the department. U.S. attorneys just don't prosecute people who violate the background check law. Tell me, please tell me, that's not coming from the department, that you want to prosecute every one of those 13,000 fugitives who had the nerve to go and attempt to buy a gun as a fugitive from justice, got turned down, and were never prosecuted. Tell me that's not the official department policy. All right, well, you put a lot into that question. Um, since the system started, two million people have been turned away uh, who tried to buy a gun and came into conflict with um, the, the NICS system. Um, the system, I think, certainly should have been expanded in that that Senate vote that was taken yesterday. Um, and the system also needs to be made better, which is one of the reasons why we had in our budget request uh, money so that we could find ways so that we, the system became um, more inclusive and had more information in it. There are certainly places where the amount of information provided by the states um, is inadequate, and we need to take steps to try to uh, remedy that situation. Uh, there's no question, I think, that the system as it is designed technically works. Um, and the question I had for the opponents of that is if you think it is a system that works okay, it's an imperfect system, needs to be made better, uh, why then would you not expand it to gun shows and to people who buy guns over the Internet? Why would you not do that? Why would you not? Uh, and that, for me, is a question that has never really been adequately answered. Uh, One-seventh of all the prosecutions that we bring in the Justice Department are gun prosecutions. Uh, we brought, I think, a total of 85,000 cases last year. I think it was the last, year, last fiscal year. Um, there were 83,000 denials, I believe, um, last year. We have to be judicious in how we use our resources. We can't prosecute every person who is um, denied a gun. We don't have the resources, 83,000. 85,000 cases in total. So we have to make determinations, and what we try to do is focus on those people who are uh, most dangerous people who, uh, if they did get um, a weapon inappropriately, are more, most likely to do something um, bad, harmful um, with it. So are you, is your testimony that in the year 2010, there were only, because there were only 62 charges referred, there were only 62 people that were dangerous enough if they got a weapon that you felt they should have been, your department, because your department makes all these determinations of referring charges. It all is in your department. There were only 62 dangerous enough? Because, see, the allegation is that, that we saved 2 million, you know, 2 million. We kept the guns out of hands of 2 million dangerous people. But the fact is that we denied 76,000. But you're going to have to tell me, is, did we only refer 62 because they were the only dangerous ones? Or did we refer 62 because it's just not a priority? Because your testimony was, we're going to, we're going to, take, we're going to refer the ones that are dangerous. Only 62 in the year? Well, I don't, you know, That's not a background check system that works if only 62 dangerous people were denied the guns. Well, let's look at it. There are a couple of things you have to understand here. I mean, it, the system does work if, in fact, those people did not get guns. All right? So that, that's part one. But now, there weren't two. Mr. Attorney General. Can you let the gentleman answer the question, please? Now, part two, I think what you're talking about, if, you know, we, I think we ought to uh, ought agree on that, that the system is effective in the sense that, uh, with regard to what I call part one now, uh, people who shouldn't get guns don't get them. Now, part two, about what we should do with those people who mm -hmm. are 
uh, who try to get guns and then are, are not prosecuted, yeah, the numbers perhaps ought to be a little higher. I don't know. Sure. We have to look at, you know, if you have a number of 62 and you have 76,000, I'm not sure what the number is that you use. Um, it's like a glaring difference. But you have to examine those cases and understand uh, were they paper violations? What was the nature of the problem? Not everybody who was denied a gun was, in fact, dangerous. There are a whole bunch of reasons why people can't be denied. And, and that's exactly my point, that... that that, that we say, it's, you know, we, we kept the guns out of the hands of two million people. They were not all that dangerous because, again, you only prosecute. But I want to move on because well, I do want to delve into marijuana course, a little bit. There were a host of yeah. people who, if they had gotten guns, undoubtedly would have done things um, that were harmful to their fellow citizens. But not bad enough to prosecute. <laughs> so let me, let me just move on because the marijuana